I want to start off today by talking about Nivea. For those of you that don't know, Nivea is a singer from back in the day. And considering how you view her career, you'd either see her as a one hit wonder or you might see her as a no hit wonder. Me personally, I consider a one hit wonder. And that one hit to me was a song she did with Jagged Edge called Don't Mess With My Man back in 2002. It's funny to me because I used to love that song and the woman that I was dating at the time it was out she would always laugh at me because i'd be singing the song not even thinking about what the lyrics were and in hindsight i can see the humor in my singing the lyrics to that song i mean if you don't know the song just the title don't mess with my man is enough but with that said it, it was and still is a very good song and after that song i never heard from nivia again musically at least so anyway Candy Burris from the group Escape, and now more recently from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, she has a YouTube series called On That Note. And on one of the episodes of that, it featured an interview with Nivea. And in that interview, she explained the reason that I never heard from her again musically. And that reason is because of the rapper Lil Wayne. So forgive me if I tell the story, if you already know it, but hey, listen to it again. Maybe I'll add some nuance. But Lil Wayne was the reason that she never recorded again. Now, I knew that they'd had a relationship that resulted in a kid, but that's all that I knew. But the thing that I didn't know about this whole thing was that she basically quit making music because he asked her to. So despite having success in the music business, and I guess we can debate what success is in this case. So let's just say, so despite having a semi-successful song, or in my case, a very successful song, yeah, that's a better, that's a better way to put it. So despite having a semi-successful song, we're going to go with that, Nivea, she was convinced by Lil Wayne to quit her career to be with him as um his housewife or whatever. And not to be confused with the real housewife like Candy, who's making a lot of money, who's gotten very successful from that, Nivea just kind of drifted away. So with all of that said, Nivea agrees to this, only to find out eventually that Wayne was seeing and having kids with other women. Okay. So while he was convincing Nivea to be the quote unquote housewife, he was also living with the mother of his first daughter, Toya. And Toya is the mother, not the daughter. The daughter's name is irrelevant. And what's funny about that is she tells a story about how they lived in a house and Wayne said, you know, I never lived in an apartment before. It would be really cool if I lived in an apartment. So why don't you and I get an apartment together? Just ask some new let's try this type of thing never heard of anything like that before but hey whatever works so they move into an apartment and later Nivea found out that the reason that he was on her to move into that apartment was because the house that they moved out of he was moving Toya the mother of his first daughter into that house so he's got a woman in the house and now he has a woman in the apartment one has his child one is pregnant with his child. Go figure that. And for people that don't know Toya, and I really don't know what Toya is relevant for, I think she was on some reality shows. And that's all that I know. And also, I know that she's attractive. But other than that, I have no idea why I know that woman. There are a lot of women out here that are attractive that I don't know. But for some reason, I know her. Go figure. But, but, I even referenced her in the past, in a past episode, as a matter of fact, when I was talking about Monique, she was coming down on women that wore bonnets out in public and stuff like that. And in response, I talked about how Toya posted a picture of herself in a bonnet standing in, the front, in front of a Bentley in defiance of what Monique was saying. And there was a battle of the bonnets and stuff like that and how men hate bonnets. Yeah, go back a couple episodes and listen to that, listen to that one if you hadn't already heard it. But this is Toya's second time being referenced on this ep on this podcast. I don't know why. Anyway, back to Nivea. 
So while Nivea was pregnant with her kid with Wayne, now if you're keeping score, Wayne has Toya in the house. He has Nivea in the apartment. Nivea's pregnant. He's also expecting another child with actress Lauren London. Lauren London, most recently known as the widow of Nipsey Hussle. I don't know if they were actually married or not, but they were married enough. So we'll say his widow. So woman in the house, pregnant woman in an apartment, and another woman pregnant living somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know if he paid for that house or maybe he lived in a mobile home since he had the house apartment duo thing going. Anyway, that's a lot to keep up with. And they wound up having their children one month apart, Nivea and Lauren London. On a side note, and I know in context, this might not be appropriate to say, Wayne has excellent taste. I, I'm not, I can't be mad at that. You have to call it what it is. <laughs> anyway, my purpose in bringing all of this up isn't to like bash Wayne for his indiscretion, indiscretions or anything like that. Don't even want to go down that road. What's the point? Nor is my purpose to bash Nivea for being naive and leaving her career for a man. You know, it is what it is. I bring this all up because I'm amazed at the power that Wayne has over these women or just women in general. It seems like, and this is the grand point that I'm bringing all of this up for. It seems like in every generation, there's a man and there's a woman that you look at and you wonder what magical power do they have over the opposite sex that allows them to defy all the odds to hypnotize people? It, it, it's impressive. It's a gift. And while in Wayne's case, people automatically might point to his having money, but nah, man, it's deeper than that. First, Wayne is five foot five. I have yet to meet a woman that said that a five foot five man is appealing. I've yet to meet a woman that has claimed that he's a handsome man. From, from, and from listening to interviews with him, it doesn't seem like he has any concept of what goes on outside of his immediate orbit. And, and he's proud of that. Like he'll, he'll support Donald Trump without even knowing anything about him. He would have just happened to have met him once on a whim for a second and a half, have a decent interaction with him. And then on the strength of that, just support him without knowing anything about his policies, politics, things that he said in the past, nothing. As a matter of fact, the only thing that he really knows anything about are sports, which isn't the number one thing that turns women on, at least from my polling. He doesn't even know hip hop. Like he's bragged about other rappers being mad about him in the past because he didn't know who they were when he met them. Actually, I really can't hold that against him considering how some of these rappers are. I can't really knock him for that. But the other stuff, so in short, not literally figuratively, whatever, he's short, he's not considered to be societally attractive, and he appears to lack depth of any kind. So what's the appeal? When I ask women what the appeal is, they agree with everything that I just said, short, lack of attraction, lacks depth, but they'll say it's something about him whatever whatever like i said earlier once a generation someone comes along that just can't be explained that can pull well beyond his means even with money essentially he hypnotizes women that's his thing and the ultimate evidence of the hypnosis that i speak of is that not only are nivia Lauren and Toya cool with each other. Like after the episode of that show with Candy that, that Nivea was on, Lauren and Toya actually reached out to Nivea to, to show their support. Now, I guess that's not too weird considering they all kind of got played around the same time. So I guess it's not a bad thing that they would bond over that. It's still a little weird. I can't see guys doing that, but maybe I can wait till later. So 
not only are they cool with each other, which might not be strange, might be strange, but they're all still cool with Wayne. They all still speak highly with him. And even in the midst of all of that, that was going on when Nivea was talking, she it still wasn't like she was speaking like out of like anger or bitterness, which she would have had the perfect right to be. With that said, part of that's on her considering she actually made the conscious choice to leave her career, but she left her career with the best of intentions, even if it was naive. So even with that, if she's bitter, can't, it would be hard to hold that against her, but she doesn't appear to be. She didn't appear to speak speak about him in those terms. So hypnosis, but staying on that confusing, hypnotizing theme, for men, the same can be said about singer Erica Badu. In, in male circles, it has been known, suspected, wondered, discussed, whatever you want to call it, that Erica Badu has powers over men. The joke has always been amongst men that you should never look her in the eye. In the same way that someone might think about the role that money plays with Wayne, for a man, one would think about the role that looks would play with Erica. After all, men are visual creatures and way too often we value those looks over everything else much to our detriment, I might add. But to look at Erica, I, I think it's fair to say that she's not societally attractive. And on a side note, I use phrases like societally attractive because I don't believe in words like ugly. I, I believe that all of God's creations are beautiful. It's just that society has a beauty standard, which while flawed, is the only standard that really exists to the masses. So that's why you gauge them by that. So to say that someone isn't a societally attractive doesn't mean that they aren't beautiful because you can't be still. But with all that said, if you come across Erica's profile pictures on like an online dating app, for example, she probably wouldn't get as many right swipes as say Toya or Nivea in her prime or Lauren London. But the point is that she's not getting these guys with her beauty. And while I talked about Wayne lacking some depth, which makes his appeal confusing, Erica seems to have too much depth which makes her appeal confusing. I don't think it's going too far to think of her as being a little spacey. She's a little out there. I think that's fair to say. And when you're listening to someone speak and, and you're having trouble connecting the dots of what they're saying, I wouldn't think that that would be very appealing. Like when someone is talking and you're thinking, what the fuck? But, but then again, guys are kind of stupid. And that stupidity will either not allow us to comprehend what she's saying or allow us to look past what she's saying. But look past to what, though? That's the question. Usually when guys look past what a woman is saying, it's usually because we're looking past to see how attractive she is. Now, she has grown quite a nice ass in recent years, but that's just recently. It doesn't explain the past. So let's talk about some of these guys that she's hypnotized, like with Wayne, Toya, Nivea, and, and, and Lauren. She's had relationships and children with rapper DOC when he was funky enough, Andre 3000 when Outcast was Outcast, and Jay Electronica when, when, yeah, let's move on. Also, she had a relationship with Common. Common's always been common pretty much. So yeah, so they had a relationship and they're all friends going back to what I talked about earlier and all speak of her in glowing terms. It, it's amazing that it, oh, they speak of her in glowing terms but they also speak of each other in glowing terms. So when I talked about the women in Wayne's life, how they talk about each other in glowing terms and talk about how weird that might be, 
That's why I said listen to it later because I'm thinking about the dudes that Erica is hypnotized, they all speak of each other in glowing terms and talk about being friends. DOC in the interview that I watched, he talked about being able to call Andre or Jay or or somebody else he's date she's dated if he needed something and they come running. Okay. Okay. And it's amazing too that of all of those guys to think that none of them in the midst of their anger when they were going through the breakup, you would think that one of them would be would would think of her as a bitch. It's 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 the go-to whenever a man is mad at a woman. And I can hear some women listening to this saying, well, I'm friends with my exes, but it's not like that. And all of your exes aren't kicking it with each other. Yeah, it's just, it's just weird. It's, it's weird. Going back to that interview with DLC, it, it's just so hard to think about the dude on that one album before he lost his voice. That dude talks about killing West Coast gangsters stuff, even though he's from Dallas and all that stuff. And now he's on this interview when Erica comes up, he's talking about love and Zen, not just for Erica, but for Erica's exes and their kids and all of that stuff. It is the weirdest thing, but you know why? Because he's been hypnotized. I honestly don't know what else it could be. But when I ask men what it is, they say there's just something about her. <laughs> anyway, Wayne and Erica, they put roots on people, generational roots. I don't know who the next generation, next generation of hip, hypnotists are gonna be. But boy, I'm scared to see it. I don't ever wanna be hypnotized. That is scary. So that's that for that. So let me close by talking about a couple other things catching you up on some things that I discussed in past episodes, just giving you all an update. First of all, last week, I talked about Kanye. Yes, that's, yeah, again, talking about Kanye. And I talked about Kanye's listening party here in Atlanta, where I reside, where he basically fleeced 40 to 50,000 of us out of $100 plus. <laughs> and the plus is those $120 basic t-shirts with pictures of his mom on them. Still odd to me, but whatever it works because i read that he sold all of those t-shirts out and i said something like this could only happen in a place as pretentious as atlanta well apparently kanye agrees with that assessment well he probably knew it all along because just two weeks after his last quote-unquote listening party he's having another one another listening party in the same stadium for the same album and it's probably safe to say that he'll get the same number of people to pay that same kind of money to attend that listening party. God bless America. God bless America. And I'm saying that as in I'm upset or judging, but really what it comes down to is just jealousy. And all of this stuff comes down to jealousy. I'm jealous of Kanye for being able to sucker that many people, including myself. I'm jealous of Wayne for his roster of fine women that he can sucker. Not that I would wanna sucker women because that's still wrong ultimately, but still, I am impressed with his roster despite his shortcomings and that long coming being his money. And even though I'm not attracted to men in any way, shape or form, I'm jealous of Erica and the hypnotizing power that she has over men that she can look in their eyes and just make them do whatever they want to and impregnate her and all of this and all of that. It's all jealousy, not judgment. I'm working on that. I don't really know that I'm working on that, but that's what it is. Another thing I want to follow up on from the last episode, what was the name of that episode? Solo Poly Best Friends. That was the episode that came out that Friday, but nobody listens to these on the day that they come out. So it was the last episode before this, but in that episode, I asked for some suggestions on how to handle this woman. They kept calling me Mike even though she didn't have a proper clearance to call me that. First of all, thank you for your suggestions. <laughs> and for those that don't know, and that's for everybody, the suggestions range from just tell her 
to stop calling me that. And if she takes it some kind of way, then that just shows that she's not for me. That's the type of advice that I would actually give to someone else. So, so it's funny that that would be thrown back at me, which is fair. So the suggestions range from that, just tell her, to Michael, you're being a little bit anal about it. That's the least of the issues. And if that's the least of the issues, then, and she's cool. If that's the least of the issues and she's cool in other ways, what's the big deal? But most people actually agree with me that she was taking liberties that she shouldn't have. So I appreciate that people agreeing with me on that. With all of that said, I, with all of that said, when I called her, I still wasn't sure how I was going to handle it. So I called her kind of blind, not necessarily knowing what I was going to say. But when she answers the phone, I say, hey, it's Michael. How are you? Her response is, hey, Mike, I'm well. At that moment, I immediately heard the nails on the chalkboard. And without even thinking, I said, look, you, you're going to have to stop calling me Mike. And her response was a little confusing to me. First, her reaction was, her reaction was as if I offended her or something. She was like, uh, okay, then Michael it is. As, as, almost as if I was like being ridiculous and she was pacifying me. Then she says, let's explore this. Why? And I responded with, we're exploring why do I want you to call me Michael? And she says, yeah. I can see her wanting to quote unquote explore it if, if I asked her to call me Cleophis or something like that. But we need to explore why I want to be called by my birth name? Back in my angry youth, I would have said, yeah, let's explore why you want to shorten my name. But experience with the opposite sex has taught me that that only leads to arguments, which I try to avoid now in my more mature age. And speaking of the more experienced me versus my angry youth, my true first thought when she asked me why I wanted to be called Michael was, because that's my name. <laughs> like like Marlo in The Wire, when he said, my name is my name. Even though it was in a different context, I never sold drugs. So after I told, after I asked her the question, she and explained that that's basically what my mother named me. And that's what I introduced myself as. She responded by saying, okay, Michael, it is. Got it. When I talk to people in the dating world, all I hear are complaints from people about the opposite sex. But we all, but we all need to accept that much of the stuff isn't women do this and men do this. No, there are things that are more unique to men versus women and vice versa that annoy us. But human beings in general are incredibly thoughtless, inconsiderate, narcissistic, which I hear all the time from women as if women can't be narcissistic. But yeah, there are a lot of narcissistic dudes out here too. But thoughtless, inconsiderate, narcissistic, just insensitive beings. Just the fact that I have to give an explanation to someone as to why I want to be called by my name when we first meet is ridiculous. It's one thing, like I said, if she's been grandfathered in, if I've been introduced as Mike, or if just down the road as we got to know each other, she just decided she wanted to shorten my name because two syllables, two syllables are just too much to say. I could get that. But when we first meet and I introduce myself as that, Oh boy. And, and the fact that someone would want an explanation as to why someone would want to actually be called by their name is just weird. Another odd thing that came from the conversation is that like many, 
she wondered why I wasn't married, especially if I want to be married. I've talked on this show about how much I want to be married. And this speaks to how women think of their own gender. A woman that wants to be married will easily excuse her being single to, she would blame it on the lack of eligible men out there. But women, for whatever reason, they cannot fathom that there might be that same lack of eligible women. We all, we all just need to start being more honest about human nature and realize that men might be fucked up. I can't deny that. But ladies, y'all are fucked up too. My, maybe not you specifically, or you don't want to admit that you are specifically, but your sister and they are in the same way that I can look at my brother and say, yeah, we got some apples out here that, that might have some worms in them. Hmm. Well, fucked up actually might be a little bit strong, but you might not be as eligible, quote unquote, as you think you are. So yeah, so if you, especially, especially, never mind. Never mind. I was just going to say, especially when I look at some of the relationships around me and just look at those scenarios. And yeah, it just speaks to how it's hard for men. It's hard for women. It's hard for everybody out here. That's pretty much all I have to say today. I hope you all have a great week. I hope you get everything that you want from this week. I hope all of the positivity that radiates out of my body comes through this, whatever you're listening through and hits you. And if you don't get what you're looking for this week, hopefully when you don't get it, you still face it like a champ and still have, have a positive attitude while waiting for it to come in the next week or the next week or whenever it is. I'm Michael not Mike. And before I go, I want to say, Reggie, say goodbye to the people. Reggie, where are you, man? You don't want to speak. I'll say it for both of us. Music's already playing. Goodbye.